Band on today. today. Oh. Right at the start of the video. Let's talk about Bandle, bro. 1994, 187 million views. Her boyfriend's a dick. He brings a gun to school. He'd simply kick. Bing! My ass, if he knew the truth, he lives. It's not it. It's, um. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm digging that. It's kind of like a, it's like a Stone Temple Pilots sort of. The, the uh, Rage Against the Machine, the Chemical Brothers sort of Matrix soundtrack. Did I tell you my Morpheus. My Morpheus joke, we can't put this in the video. It's almost got a like a dum Yeah, Justin's favorite song. Whoa! Sitar, huh? Let me let me get a taste of that. Ah, wait, what? Is this like um I'm a loser, baby? I gotta be the, the camp seat on the love seat. It's choking on the splinters. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know what he's. It, it's a Dadaist uh, nightmare, and it comes up on Peloton rides all the time. Don't believe everything that you read. You get a parking violation and a maggot on your sleeve. It's choking on the splinters. Oh, it sounds, it's cooked, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrendous. It's oaky. It is oaky. Defeated person is the clue. It's got me. It's got me laughing so hard. Defeated person. Oh man. Defeated person has got the energy of like this right here. Oh no! It is the dive rocket launcher. Take action regarding that individual. Relax. I'll handle it. I am the angry pumpkin. <laughs> oh man. Oh, dude, there's, there's something about that. I am a defeated person. <laughs> I swear to you, I'm not on any cough medicine today. It's just good to be back. I'm not high on cough syrup. It's just funny, bro. I'm sorry that you have to get zooted in order to appreciate some good stand-up comedy. Some of us just experienced ego death naturally through the power of rational thinking. I didn't need like a little LSD tab with SpongeBob SquarePants on it. I just used my superior intellect. Permission to swag out this Thursday? Temporarily revoked? Because my feelings are hurt? We can redeem it with Bandle. 1978, a billion views. Okay, I... Honestly, until they start adding a pitch to drums, I don't think we're getting bandled in one too often. Ooh. It's got a certain... It's got a certain je ne sais quoi to it. Oh! Da -da 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 -um. We're having a ball. Don't stop me we're having such a good time, so give me a call. Don't, that's yeah, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. 2011 mix. Okay, honestly, the MIDI brass is horrible, but the choir goes crazy. That's some good stuff right there. Favorite song of people who love TV commercials and 
watch baseball games. Listen, I'm going to plus two you on that one. If Don't Stop Me Now by Queen has a hater, I, it's, it's you, but I'll be right there behind you. If there are two haters, one of them is me. If there is one hater, I'm probably dead and you're still alive. I've come to respect Queen a little bit more. They're probably the only band where I've started to respect them more the more I've heard of them on the Peloton. Queen is cursed in the sense that all of their most famous songs, with just a couple of exceptions, are actually like their worst songs. Bohemian Rhapsody, just kind of annoying, overplayed like from fifth grade onwards. It's not their fault. I think when it came out, people were probably like, that's sick. It's just been too long. It's been around too long. We Will Rock You, absolutely um, embarrassing song for a group of artists to make. Literally middle school baseball music. We Are the Champions, one of the only songs more embarrassing. They, wrote, they sat in a room together. They wrote down No Time for Losers because We Are the Champions. It's worse than middle school baseball. It's middle school hockey. But... The ones that they wrote that actually have got like a little When they started getting down with the, with the funky bunch, they were doing some good stuff. My favorite Bohemian Rhapsody, by the way, is um, Princes of the Universe from the Highlander soundtrack. If we're going to get all glam and musical theater and etc cetera, etc cetera, then go full cheese okay go full final countdown you don't like their popular songs you like another one bites the dust another deep cut listen you got problems i didn't say oh i only like their underground stuff you've been talking to people who are not as smart as me what i said is with a couple of exceptions all of their most famous songs uh are bad that's why i said they're cursed another one bites the dust is not a deep cut I'm starting to see why a lot of you didn't think that Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri was not a good movie. You got to pay attention. There's things that you got to remember from the start of the movie all the way through to the end of the movie to really understand what they're trying to do. Here, I get that it seems a little harder because it's five hours long, but really, we only keep things in the cache for like three or four sentences, so I expect you to keep up, okay? Okay. It was a bad movie. Why? Because someone who does a bad act in the first part of the movie gets a little bit of redemption in the end. Why? Because people change. Instead of just being a bad dude gets punished power fantasy for you to jerk off to. What are you talking about? You know what? There's a little movie. It got nominated for Best Picture you might be more interested in. You may note it did not get nominated for Best Actress or Best Director. And we're looking into that right now. I think if we do a serious write-in campaign... We could possibly change that. There is still time. Is it 2X speed watchable? It's probably better on 2X, yeah. I like, Corey, Corey, we're cinema brothers. He said he likes three billboards more than uh, Banshees of Inish Aaron. They're both good. But he's right. It's better than the Banshees of Inish Aaron. If you don't like Banshees, you're a clown. I gave it three and a half stars and a heart, bro. You really can't give a fucking good movie a 7 out of 10 these days. You got to say, it's fine if you're a fan of the genre. You got to say, I get it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. People will come to your house and kill you. They'll say, I've seen all the video essays on that movie. It deserved a 4. You see what's wrong with you? You know, the French Connection is in the Library of Congress. I gave it a 3. That means Ban Banshees of Sharon is like 17% better than what... Abraham Lincoln considers to be one of the greatest films ever made. How about Master and Commander? I give it a four. That's a good movie. The Lesser of Two Weevils. Seven out of ten means you like it. Three and a half out of five means it's dog shit. Don't be mad at him, okay? Prezzo's telling the truth. What you're saying is that it's the structure of Letterboxd that's making me look bad. What movie is a five for you? Three buildings, three, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I gave, it, I gave it a five this very morning. No shot. Go back to your fucking Francois Truffaut, the 400 blows, Federico Fellini, eight and a half ass, Ingmar Bergman, wild strawberries, motherfucker. You shouldn't, your, your quarrel is not with me. You fucking Jules A. Jim enjoyer. Your quarrel should be with the people on Letterboxd who have turned it into like a 
social media website where it's like, write one funny joke as your review and the score doesn't matter. This is a serious medium, okay? People are reviewing like Schindler's List and they're leaving like a pithy little review like, do you think Liam Neeson drives a Nissan? And it gets like 15,000 thumbs ups because human society is cooked. Lady Bird better than three billboards? <sighs> I might plus two that. I'm, and they both have the same actor in it. The actor who plays Francis McDormand's son and uh, Saoirse Ronan's first high school boyfriend. I do love Lady Bird. Lady Bird is a superlative film as well. There's no doubt about that. Okay. 2002 with 1.3 billion views. 2002 with 1.3 billion views. This has got to be like Drops of Jupiter or something. Or that's probably like 2001. Maybe this is like Complicated or Skater Boy or something. Or a gorilla song? Ch -ch -ch. Sometimes I really want to be alone. But that's one state I'm never in. I need a little... I, I, or is this I Turn My Camera On by Spoon? Give me a second here. Oh, you, if you only had one freaking shot. One opportunity. One stream on Friday, January the 26th, 2024. Twitch TV. It's Q1. You're building momentum. You're a volcano that's waiting to explode. You got vomit on your sweater already, mom's... <laughs> so I went Lin-Manuel Miranda mode. Um, this is called Lose Yourself from 8 Mile Soundtrack. I got it. Oh, now that, you couldn't hear it at all, huh? Ooh, it's an awfully hot coffee pot, you better let it go. Should I drop it? Probably not. I'm Donald Trump, he's big, he's orange, and he's got the problem with his orange. Oh, man. 1996, 244 million views. Okay. Why do I want to say this is like Fly by Sugar Ray? I'm going to type it. Fly, Sugar, they don't even have it. The best song of all time, they don't have it on the list. Okay, it sounds like some sublime stuff, but I don't know. Oh, I like that. I'm gonna know this. Isn't it? Yeah, 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 no, 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 hang on. This is like, um, you gotta be bad, you gotta be. You gotta be bad, you gotta be bold. No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is, but it's something like that. It's like a women in song, sort of. I got something, there's, I, there's a hook I'm connecting to. Yeah. Okay. I, that the bass goes crazy. Ooh. <laughs> All right, Phil Spector. You ever consider playing a melody? No disrespect. Okay, give me, I, I almost want to type Alanis Morissette just to see. Could, is it possible that this could be ironic? Let's hear it. Free ride when you've already paid. Yeah, dude! You know how I know this shit? Because every single time I listen to Jagged Little Pill, I'm like, the bass on this album fucks, bro. I'm a little embarrassed I didn't get it just off the bass. 
I know you're gonna be like, it doesn't fuck that much. No, no, no. The bass on Jagged Little Pill fucks like crazy, bro. How does that make sense? You, you could just picture the dude playing the bass being like, You know? Like you can just, you can picture it, bro. Ooh, it's kind of sick with it too. I'm, I'm loving the ad libs, brother. That's kind of sick with it. That's kind of slick with it. I love it when he does vocoder, vocoder voice. I, I just can't believe that I can sing better when I put on the vocoder. Not an Alanis fan. I wouldn't even consider myself an Alanis fan, to be honest with you. But Jagged Little Pill is the exception that proves the rule. Whatever that means. It's the straw that stirs the drink. Jagged Little Pill, one of the, one of the best albums of the 1990s. Everything else she's ever made, could take it or leave it, honestly. Could take it or leave it. What would you cut off of Sufjan Stevens, Illinois? Well, I'm getting dragged, bro. I couldn't believe... You know what? I, the tweet from Anthony Fantano, if you'll excuse me, was what album is, a, is over long, okay? I said Sufjan Stevens, Illinois. Now, I did preface it by saying I love it, but Sufjan Stevens, come on, feel the Illinois. One person replied and said, if this was any other album, I would have plus twoed, but this album is literally perfect. Really? Sufjan Stevens, 37 long opus, Illinois, is the only album ever made that you think a track can't be cut from. What an asinine and intellectually dishonest statement. There, there are like 11 tracks on the album that are just skits, okay? I mean, they're not skits, they're, they're interludes. But literally nobody backed me up, bro. Nobody backed me up. It's, it's one of my favorite albums of all time. Some of those tracks are not essential, okay? Who's at any other album? Oh, really? Spiderland needs a song cut? The shit is six songs long. They showed incredible restraint. Those motherfuckers wrote seven songs in their entire career. Sufjan Stevens put 38 songs on his album. What are you cutting from Close to the Edge? Brother... That is, that's fucked up, okay? Because there's three songs on that album. But we'll do process of elimination. I'll tell you, we are not cutting close to the edge. It's one of the greatest songs of all time. So are the other two, but one of them's got to go. I mean, I, I kind of feel like you cut Siberian Catru because it's an amazing song, but it's like the least, I don't know. What do you want me to say? It's the least um, operatic off of the album. I feel like it's the the two song album makes more sense with Close to the Edge and and You and I. It doesn't really make sense, although it's still cool that they drop Close to the Edge and then they're like, here's like a nine minute long song that just slaps. Thematically, I think you need you need to keep and you and I as much as it pains me because Siberian Catro's a Catro's a great song. Saying Illinois is too long is a crime. Were you born in 2005? I'm just asking. I bought the album uh, from a CD store called Sunrise Records. I was there. I didn't pirate it off of fucking oink.fm or whatever. So I put my money on the table. I put my nuts on the table. I can say my piece on the album. Age of Ads is better. No, it's not. But Illinois could have a couple of songs cut from it. Your ass is not listening to the whole album all the way through every time you listen to it. That's insane. I'm not accusing you of being a singles Andy. You're just not, the 18th time the rising prairie fire or how we separate the wheat from the chaff in Decatur is like, that. You're, you're hitting the skip button to get to like Casimir Pulaski Day or something. The hits do be hidden though. There's no doubt about it. So wrong. Hey bro, pass me the ox. Okay, but you better not put on fucking the overseer's tower again. Three minutes later on Highway 91. It's a long album, man. I'm an album Andy. I'm just saying you could cut a couple from it. 2016 
1.6 billion views. That's a lot. By the way, saying 2016, did you know, um, you, maybe you've seen this on social media, it's just a natural passage of time, right? People are now nostalgic for 2016. There was a tweet that went viral, or maybe it was a TikTok, and it was like the worst day in 2016 to 2019, and it's just like uh, Ryan Gosling laughing, being on a date, having an amazing time. And then someone tweeted, like, why are people so nostalgic for 2016? And then a bunch of people started weighing in and they were like, things back then just seemed like they were more free and more open and like the world was full of possibilities. And then you realize that they're wrong. The first alarm of the like three alarm chili is realizing that they're wrong. 2016 as an adult was messed up, bro. That was the year John Oliver built the 2016... Uh, like monument and then kicked it over and blew it up with some dynamite, right? 2016 for a lot of people was like the, it, it was the, the rage against the machine, wake up, like things are freaking suck this year. But then the second alarm is realizing that like, that's the way that I feel about like 2005. And I was probably wrong. You know, I would, I, I, I've talked about that with my parents before, like for their generation. Like sometimes my parents will be like, you know, why, why are young people so, what's the word? Discontented is probably the best way to say it. Discontented. And I'm like, well, you know, the economic conditions that were there when they were children are like not there as an adult. So it kind of feels like they got promised like a fall uh, of a bad deal and stuff like that. And there's, you know, like, it seems like global conflict is, is kicking off again and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's true. But at the same time, I'm talking to my mom and she's like, you know, yeah, we had that. We had like the Cuban Missile Crisis. It seemed like the whole world was going to, uh, you know, get erupted into nuclear war at any given moment. And now people are like, OK, Boomer, you wouldn't know what it's like. And I'm like, well, mom, they didn't. OK, like stop having trauma about the Cuban Missile Crisis, OK, because that shit did not pop off. How long are you going to milk that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were seven years old, you thought you were going to die in like nuclear hellfire. Well, it didn't happen. So get over it, people. I guess that's what it's always like, you know? You're all, you false, you are probably going to be nostalgic for a period in your life when you were young. Maybe it'll be high school, maybe it'll be college, maybe it'll be just after that. Maybe it'll be like, you know, earlier childhood. Right? I think we, we naturally think that it's the time that we're nostalgic for, but it's the age, you know? It's not the time, it's the age. I'm sure if I was like 27 in 2005, I'd be like, what the fuck? We just started four more years with George W. Bush. This is so fucking fucked, man. I'm starting to think the Iraq war is not going to end in 18 months. But because I was like, you know, 15, 16, 17, I was like, Pog, driving to the movie theater to watch Talladega Nights. Things were so much simpler back then. Okay, anyway. This is Nine Inch Nails. It's a 1.6 billion view, Nine Inch Nails cut from 2016. Okay, I know it. You just gotta wait for the three, two, one, go. I'm in the corner, watching you kiss her. Oh. Three, two, one. It's definitely not, I need more. Ooh. Okay, okay. It's got a little like Lady Gaga born this way, but it's like five years later uh, than that. It's, there's something to it. I sort of don't like it. I'm guessing that the song is kind of bad. I'm, I, I'm willing to be wrong. Let's see what else we got. Up, something to lean on. This is Lean On by Major Laser. What? <laughs> oh, da, 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 da. I know this. This is um, this is from uh, Beat Fever from Champions of Fire too. Is this is this Marshmallow featuring Bastille? I told you there was a little 
it's it, I believe Halsey is no 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 it's not Halsey. I need the clue. I took a pill in the visa. I took a pill in the visa. Do you think it was Imodium AD? Is this the freaking Fox song? It's not the freaking Fox song. It's a, I took a pill in a beater, cause I had diarrhea. But when I took the pill, it wasn't the best cause I had the side effects and then I ended up pooping my pee out. <laughs> you know that one? You never heard that one? All my songs are sad songs. You don't know that one? That's a, that's a Peloton classic. 1981, 186 milli views with the drums. Oh, that's uh, the Human League, Don't You Want Me. She was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. When I found you, we're using the wrong kind of conjugation here. Don't, don't you want me. Synth one, two, three, synth four, five, six, and seven. No, they ruined it. They ruined it today. That needs to be that needs to be higher in the mix and it needs to be in a higher register. That's my feedback. Okay, there's something good. That, that's the fastest bandle I've ever had. Do you think there's any chance that uh, Apollo gets this? Uh, he's already done it. Did he get it? I think this is the kind of song Apollo possibly has never heard. He also got it in one. Never mind. I apologize. I wasn't familiar with your game. I wasn't saying it's hard necessarily, just that it seems like it's possible he'd never been exposed to it. But then again, I, I think he's seen all three seasons of Stranger Things, so... Okay, 1969, 25 million views. Ooh. Huh, two, huh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> you ever see the Ben Stiller show? I don't know. I mean, I'm going to need more. This is every song from 1969. Okay. Ooh. He ain't afraid to take a walk. He ain't afraid to take a walk, let me tell you that. God's burps, God's burps right there. Let me get the piano. Yeah, yeah. To keep me from getting to you, babe. This is Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Marvin Gaye. That's correct. We got there. For a second, I almost said an Amy Winehouse song. Then I was like, I'm pretty sure in 1969, she was not born yet. Mid, mid. Great song, of course. Mid, uh, mid voice cover. It is midi, that's true. Charlie Brown, adult vocal solo. So true. Hello to the gamers. Quick bandle before Super Auto Pets. Before sponsored puzzle stream where we're giving away codes for the demo so you can get into the game and jump up and down in front of me and I have no possible way to stop you. <clears throat> 1993, here's a new one. Track one, drums, bass, harp, glockenspiel, plus strings one. We about to get Wes Anderson up in this bitch. Uh, it's the Jurassic Park theme song. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's too easy. Too simple. Usually I get annoyed when people say, can you get Bandle in one? Because like the drums have no melody, so it's really hard to tell what it is unless I guess maybe you're a drummer. But uh, this was uh, a bit of a gimme for sure. And then this is where we lose it or use it. All right. That would actually go hard in like a Super Nintendo Jurassic Park game. I think they did a good job with it. Hey, Chakrabad and Jagannath, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. They did kind of go nuts on the table for that one. John Williams kind of goaded with it. George Lucas, when the function got a little John Williams at it. Ooh. Ooh. 2014 with 451 million views. This is Mr. Beast, last person inside of the circle wins a Mazda RX-8. All right, well, I'll tell you right off the jump, the drums are telling me nothing. I, wait, give it, give it a moment, give it a second. Yeah, 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 I like it. I don't like the third one as much. Let's, let's, let's throw him a little monkey wrench here in the second phrase. Okay, you got, you get, with the third measure, you gotta hit me with something good here. Okay, you're washed. I get it now. They were laying down some harmony. They were they were playing the fifth so that the choir could take the the third. Opposite, they were playing the root so the choir could take the fifth. My apologies. I need I need strings. I'm going to know the song. It's just a matter of of when I know it. This feels very like 21 minutes into the Peloton ride, they give you a little juice to keep you going. I need voices, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 okay, one second. <laughs> I've heard it for sure. So I know it and I don't like it. That puts it in a dangerous spot. Let me close my eyes or imagine where I might have been when I heard this. Routines. Remain elevated. Stay lifted. Habits. Stay high. <laughs> you can't beat me with a context clue. That's all I'm saying. But we keep, we got 74 out of 74 found. That's kind of crazy. Ooh. Ah, uh, this is Greece. No, it's not. It's 1963. Pizza Tower. Pizza Tower ass song. Okay, I don't want to hear this anymore. Any guitars in the house? Oh, there it is. Jeopardy theme song? It, it almost sounds like a... CCR, but it's not the right era. Ah, 
This is Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. The trumpet! The, the, the Lou Bega was right when he said it. The trumpet. I gotta hear this. Can I get voice cover, please? Hey, hold in his cock. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty bad. You know what? This, this, this should play when you win in Balatro. Yeah, I agree. I think they should go one register up, one octave up. Should sing that in the high register, in my opinion, KK Slider. But don't let me tell you how to live your life. Bro, it's Johnny Cash? Yeah, Johnny Cash sounds good, but KK Slider, Johnny Cash kind of sounds like ass. Instead of making it sound like ass to replicate Johnny Cash badly, they should make it sound good so that it's fun to listen to. That's just my controversial opinion on music. I know there's lots of people out there, their number, number one thing they want in art is uh, realism. They would say things like, why would I ever go to an art gallery when instead I could just look at a picture? Well, more power to you. It's your time. It's your life. But shut your mouth, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You don't understand. 1999, 404 million views. Easy part two. This is Lenny Kravitz Fly Away. Nope. No, it is not. train she works from nine to five and then i need i need electric guitar at a minimum oh no scrubs they weren't joking it is a part two that guitar makes it bro Okay. They kind of went off on this one. Okay, KK. Okay, they went off on that one, no doubt about it. I'm legit 30 years old. I've never heard this in my life. It took me six guesses. That's crazy. I mean, I believe that you are a real individual. But, I mean, that's surprising. Because this might be the most popular song of 1999. I guess you would be like six when it came out, something like that. Five or six. No way. I mean, it's in the top five of 1999 for sure. Most popular songs of 1999. Okay. Billboard Hot 100 Singles of 1999. Number one was Believe by Cher. Number two, No Scrubs. Number three, Angel of Mine by Monica. <laughs> That's a angel of mine. That one, right? Heartbreak Hotel, Whitney Houston featuring Faith Evans and Kelly Price. I don't know about that one. Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. I got to think that if they re-rank... That one would probably be uh, at the top, maybe. Kiss Me by Sixpence None the Richer. Genie in a Bottle by Christina Aguilera. I would have to think that that one would probably be like number two or number three if they were to re-rank uh, re it. Lots of classics in here. Smooth by Santana featuring Rob Thomas. But for me personally, I think Smooth is kind of like, um, it's more like Rob Thomas featuring Santana, if you'll allow me the, the controversial take. I mean, Rob Thomas is the singer. I get I'm not trying to besmirch the guitarist. I'm just saying. Once with the share hate? I, it's not share hate. I just personally don't believe that Believe is the number one song of 1999 in terms of legacy at the very least. It was very popular. It was on the radio a lot. Certainly, I think top five is a reasonable place to put it. But does it have the same kind of legacy as Baby One More Time? The song that launched uh, the career of one of the last pop idols? of the 20th century? I don't think it does. I, I know these. She's So High by Tal Bachman, number 51. Mambo number five by Lou Bega, 
Number 42, right below Do Wop That Thing by Lauren Hill. What the hell is Do Wop That Thing doing at 41? That should be like number seven, man. I mean, it clears all these 98 Degrees songs. It clears All I Have to Give by Backstreet Boys. That's not even one of like the Backstreet Boys' top eight jams. Did I ever tell you my Tal Bachman She's So High story? I was being driven back from like an amusement park with my friend in my friend's mom's van. And uh, that song came on. And I said, uh, I hate this song. And then she said, if you don't like this song, you can get out of the car. And then she was like serious. She was a very stern woman. Like, she was serious about it. She was like, I will take no Tal Bachman sass in this vehicle while I'm driving. And you know what? No, it's not based, because the song kind of fucking sucks, bro. It's not a good song. I was right at age 11 or whatever. 1981, 21 million views. Honey, you're a boy making big noise, gonna be a bee, gonna be a big man someday. You've got mud on your face, you big disgrace. Waving that feather all, it's, it's cooked. That is definitely not it. Boom, boom, ch, boom, boom. I, I mean, we might as well, I know it's not, but we might as well try. That's We Will Rock You, not We Are The Champions. Ooh, oh, it's I Love Rock and Roll, so put another dime. In the jukebox, baby. Okay, that's actually like too easy. <laughs> Honestly, I just can't do this. I'm, I, I can still hear, but I'm muting it for you because I just don't like this song. I, I, I don't like this song at all. I'm saving you from it. Ooh, I kind of like the though. If Joan Jett has uh, one hater, it is me. What's crazy, though, is I don't know if Joan Jett actually has one hater. Because anytime I'm like, I kind of hate Joan Jett's music, people are like, she's uh, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm like, she kind of, like, Bad Reputation is a good song, but, like, that's one song. That song isn't even her, it's a cover? Well, she, who, nobody put a gun to her head and said, you got to sing this. Cherry Bomb is good? Is that even by her? Cherry Bomb song. That song is by The Runaways, bro. That is not her. Unless she's in The Runaways. <laughs> Songwriter, Joan Jett. Okay, okay, all right, all right. All I'm saying is, I think the way that Joan Jett is uh, treated in media is the way that I feel about Bikini Kill. They should be given the flowers they give to Joan Jett to Bikini Kill. Or they, they could give both of them flowers, but Bikini Kill is still better. Bandle Yesterday was a good one. Bandle Yesterday was, was it I Love Rock and Roll? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know you don't like that one. It's actually possibly my most hated song of all time. <laughs> At least it's my most hated. Classic it's in my songs. top five most hated classic rock songs. That's slow ride for me. See, I got no problem with Slow Ride. You didn't listen to enough radio if you don't have uh, a problem with Slow Ride. I kind of like uh, when it goes like... Like it's... I think it's just the bass, but it kind of sounds like a bass accordion or something. The, it's just like... It's such a long song. The radio edit is so long, which is like usually it's supposed to be shorter. That's true. And every time, like, you just know it's coming because you just get that... It's like, oh, fuck, man, not again. Oh, man, that is good. I, you know what radio edit pisses me off more than any other radio edit? Uh, go. I mean, if it's not a classic rock song, I won't know it, but go ahead. Uh, Goodbye Stranger by Supertramp. Uh because it always it, it ends out, right? with like a like a 90 second guitar solo that rips <laughs> but uh -huh. that is not okay on the radio so they just cut it after like the last singing part out. yeah yeah it's so annoying so the song is like a minute and a half long and then they cut out the part that that rips the whole song rips it's though. a great song but i'm i like it they want to anyway okay have you begun I have, and I, th and I think I know what movie this is from, but I don't know the name. I... 
this could oh, be. I'm going back again. Hold on. Let's jump. Give, me the, give me the drums again. Have you done number one? Uh, I'm, I'm listening to the drums currently, yeah. I did not get it on the drums. I'm gonna go with this. Oh, wait, what? Is it kind of the name of the song? Is this? Okay. I don't think I have the song that I even want on the thing. I know this song. Oh, here we go. I got it in one. You got it in one? I got it in one. This is from Loki Season 1. It's... No, it's not. I can tell you. Am I insane? <laughs> Am I an insane you, person? You'll get it immediately if I tell you what movie it's from. Is this not the song that goes "I need a hero"? It is. I'm holding out, out. for a hero. Yeah, holding I I out, hero and it, well. it's not Pat Benatar. It's Bonnie Tyler. It's Bonnie Tyler, man. Oh, dude, I thought that was Pat Benatar the whole time. I gotta hear the, it's, it's, the voice it's, at least. It's the Shrek 2 banger, man. Uh, they kind of overcooked the vocals a little bit. Yeah. It's not bad. The, the best part of this song, I love the in the background, was like the arpeggios. I cannot hear this song without thinking of Shrek 2. Of course. My, my two cents, the MIDI version doesn't work that well because of the fact that the main appeal of the song is Bonnie Tyler actually like ruining her vocal cords in order to sing it. Like yeah. she's really, she's straining the whole time. I thought she was a one hit wonder. I didn't realize that she did this and Total Eclipse of the Heart. Yeah. I'm not I knew she did Total like Eclipse a, of the Heart. I didn't know star? she did this. She got two songs. It's not a star. That's enough. That's enough, man. <laughs> that's all you need. They're two big songs. Don't get me wrong. They're like two of the <laughs> like biggest songs of the eighties, aren't they? It's crazy. This is from Footloose. I didn't know that. That's what I thought. So I heard that and I saw the dude dancing in the like the parking garage in my head, and I was like, <laughs> I don't know the name of this shit. And then when I listened to it again, I was like, Is this the same song from Shrek Two? And I was like, Wait, have you seen Footloose? No, but I've seen the thing of oh, him doing okay. the dance. Because so it was going to blow me away if you I knew haven't it was in that seen movie. The Matrix, but you've seen Footloose. <laughs> that was going to be... I've seen most major movie scenes just through pop culture. It's just right, that I've yeah, seen yeah. actual movies. I don't wish to work. I just want to bang on my drum all day, all day. I don't... No, no, wait. This is... This is uh, time traveling Pharrell Williams who made happy. Uptight All Right by Stevie Wonder. They don't have it. Okay, let's go next. I do like that. Okay, I you you knew I'd like that, and I do like it. This is Susie Q. This is way too early. Oh, this is a, I Feel Good by James Brown. Boom, boom, I'm James Brown. Wow! <laughs> it's too easy. It's too easy. Yeah, it's so true. Me when I feel good. That was that was fine. Bandles had some some gimmies lately, but they kind of owe it to us after that Tovlo song that nobody's ever heard. I need I need more. Oh yeah yeah. Someone to lean on. No, okay. Two, three, four. My name is Pink and I'm here to say I'm at the club every day. I like to sing. I like to dance. Sometimes I wear skirts. Sometimes I wear pants. Ooh. I 
kind of I'm kind of digging it, bro. Okay, I need I need the real melody, please. Yeah. Uh, Remote employment. Fifth harmony, work from home. Okay, I don't think I've ever heard this song in my life before. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever heard this, man. With God as my witness. It is 2.8 billion views. You must have. I don't know. I wasn't riding the school bus the same year as you guys were. It was a good pandemic song. This shit came out in 2016. It's peak retail? I don't know, man. They should put some dismemberment plan in this, John. Okay, anyway. Let's try some Bandle. Ooh, okay. I'm going to know this. I feel like this, it, it's not Stairway to Heaven, but it's got Stairway to Heaven vibes. Hang on, I'm gonna burp. I almost always move away from the camera to burp because I'm worried that I'm gonna look like the guy, you know the guy I'm talking about? The, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the Jamaican dance hall singer, who I believe says, and I quote, when me fuck pussy, the pussy turn red. I'm worried I'm going to burp and it's going to be like, and then like a vein's going to pop out and I'm going to turn red or something like that. Yes, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm concerned. <laughs> All right, phase two. This is um, Leg Zeppelin, Cashmere, nineteen ninety remastered. Oh. the kind of shit that plays on Dracula's boat. It, I, I've got to try Stairway to Heaven. I'm sorry. It just has, it has so much of the, the pluck, the pluck to it. the Sopranos theme song? <laughs> I don't know what the Sopranos theme song is. I don't know what it's called. Songs for a, a, an Italian restaurant? That's not gonna help. I need mobster. Moth. Capo. Gangster. Kinks. Mobster. Kingpin. Hmm. Godfather. The theme from the God Love theme from the Godfather. <laughs> we're so back. 82 out of 82 found. That was we're getting a little scared there, though. That's not from the Sopranos, huh? The film reel means it's from a movie. All right, chat, so what do you want? Do you want the streamer to just uh, look at chat and cheat and read what you say and use that to come up with the answer? Or do you want the chat, do you want the streamer to try to do it like organically? We want them to cheat? Boy, do I have a show for you. <laughs> anyway, I'll hit you with the bandle real quick first. 
2011, 1.1 billion views. 2011, 1.1 billion. Times I really want to be alone. But that's one state I'm never in. Ohio! Okay, next. Ooh. I, I, it's menacing. It's got like a down now, down now, now, down now, now. Got a little Kim Deal DNA in there. Okay. Take a dum dum take a. I made that part up. Next. I feel like I should know it by now. I feel like my brain is saying this is an Adele ballad. Mm, maybe not though. I mean like it's it's Packle Bell's Canon again, bro. Let me get piano and strings too. Oh, um. It's a it's like a commercial song. It's a song in a commercial. Your kids don't love you because they have grass stains on their jeans. You need tied ultra clean pods immediately. You need you you are overweight because you're eating bananas. You need to buy our cube of Nutra protein instead. It's something like that. Okay, good. Let, let me get the voice on this. Oh, oh, it's We Are Young by Fun. We are young, featuring Janelle Monae. Okay, we got there. Is it true this was produced by Mac Jackmioff? Yes, that's crazy. I know this song. I did not know it was featuring Janelle Monae. Because I think I've only heard like 72 second snippets of it when I was inside of like uh, uh, an American Eagle Outfitters or something. 19. 82. This is Raspberry Beret by Prince. Oh, I thought for sure we had it in one, bro. I was so ready for it. You know what I'm saying? The kind you'd buy from, mm, say, a secondhand store or something. 1982. 32 milli. Ooh. This is Goodbye Horses by Lazarus Q. Nope. I, I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. I just can't... What? Uh, okay, no, no, it's not Dead or Alive, Spin Me Right Round, because we already had it. One, two... Into the four, Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre are at your door, ready to make an entrance. So back on up, cause you know we about to rip it up. Give me the microphone first, so okay, I don't think it's nothing but a G thing. Why are my hands so sweaty? Play a different note, 1982 challenge, difficulty degree impossible. It's Tears for Fears, Mad World. All right, all right, fair enough. I'm a little embarrassed that it took me five to get uh, a Tears for Fears song, but at the same time, this is not in my top three Tears for Fears. I'm a... I'm a I'm a everybody wants to rule the world, head over heels, mother's talk sort of guy. NL, you're just a slut for songs from the big chair. Caught? You caught me. You caught me on that one. It's a great album. You caught me. No shout. Excuse me. <laughs> you mind your own business a little bit, please? Remind me tomorrow, bro. Remind me tomorrow. Everybody wants to rule the world is skibbity core. Well, for 40 years it wasn't. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> 2.7 billy views. I feel like I'm in the fucking Battle of the Bulge or something, bro. Oh, you can you hear it? You can hear it. Okay. 
Automatic, name is Sonic, Super Sonic, name is Game at One Man, Sam at One Two Step. You don't know what the song is. I don't know how the song goes. Um, this is like a G6. No, no. Going abusing the hand clap. So obviously they're not paying by the clap. I I guarantee I've heard this on the Peloton. I don't know what it is yet though. There's a voice in it. That's a good start. The average streamer in their intro screen for 90 minutes before they start playing League of Legends for 14 hours. The streamer's intro screen for 90 minutes before uh, they take the intro screen off and they're like, hang on guys, I just gotta eat my DoorDash real quick. I don't know what this is. I have no concept of, of what this is yet. And everybody on Earth has watched this four times. Like, that's crazy. Okay, I mean... Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know, man, I don't know. Oh, uh... Yeah, yeah, no, okay, I've heard, this is definitely something I've heard on the Peloton. Is this Marshmallow? Marshmallow? It's not Marsh. It's why you're here for. What you... This is Calvin Harris, this is what you came for. Okay, well, thank God for the, the verbal cue at the end. That's the ninth time we've... Uh, had to resort to the verbal cue at the end. I knew it was going to be some EDM stuff. I mean, because the music was obviously EDM. But uh, I'm sure I've heard this on the Peloton. I only know I can conjure one... Cal no, I can cal conjure two Calvin Harris songs from memory. One of them is... Um, I feel so close to you right now. It's like a force field. I know that one. And I know... Um, I met you in the summer. Wow, wow, wow. Titanium? Excuse me, that's David Guetta. I am titanium. That's the same song? No, it's not. One of them's called Close to You. The other one's called Met You in the Summer. <laughs> Did I stumble upon an internet meme I'm not familiar with? When I met you in the summer. <laughs> that's called Summer? We found love. That's 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 David Guetta, man. We found love in a hopeless place. We found lapis in a Minecraft cave. We found Minecraft in a lapis cave. That's Calvin Harris. I had no idea. It, it's just listen. I mean, no disrespect. It's not my genre of music. I've never been to Europe or Las Vegas. By uh, you know. By my own desire, at least. You been to Sweden? Yeah, why do you think I get down with Jens Lackman, bro? You really think I didn't have season tickets to the uh, Vax Joe Warriors to see Elias Pettersson win uh, the Golden Plate for Player of the Year in the SHL circa 2018? If I had to choose, would I choose Heaven or Las Vegas? Um, no disrespect to the Cocteau Twins. I guess I would choose heaven because I don't like Las Vegas, really. Um, even you might say, but NL, you idiot. That would mean that you're dead. Well, that's true, but I would be in heaven, which is like supposed to be better than earth forever. It's like my daughter, she's, she's going through a very macabre phase. She's going through a Tim Burton phase. Sometimes she'll poke me and say, daddy, now you're dead. And I say, I'm dead. And then she says, yeah, you're dead for 100 years. And at first you're like, oh no, I'm dead. But then you're like, wait a minute. This is like the best possible outcome. Being dead for 100 years means I'm coming back. That would be only the second time that's ever happened in history. 
Now, I would rather just live out my days in the current generation that I'm already a part of. I know the societal norms. I know when I go to a restaurant, I know if it's the kind of place where you order on the left and then pay on the right or order on the right and pay on the left. I know if it's the sort of place where when you're done with the meal, you wait for the server to come with the bill and then you put your credit card on top of the bill or if it's the kind of place where you just walk up to the front and then they just have your bill for you and you pay it there. So I, I wouldn't want to go through all the, the rigmarole of learning how to do that in 2124. But in all... If you compare it to the counterfactual, which is being dead forever, being dead for a hundred years maybe is, is like, it's not the absolute worst. Vandal. 1965, 250 million views. Ooh. <laughs> Malik takes the package from the American man. Malik takes the package to the free trade zone. He's quick, ordering a subway combo. No chips, give me the macadamia. Okay, you know the talking heads? This is, obviously that song's from 1982, so it can't be this. I don't know what this is yet. Give me a, give me a little help. Ooh. Okay, all right. Am I crazy to think that this could be like some Robert Marley? And I'm not talking about Ebenezer. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a lot of Bob Marley songs. <laughs> this is One Love by Bob Marley. Oh, he's cracked. I mean, listen, I'm not sure if everybody's like this, but if I hear some reggae type beats, first thing I think of, Bob Marley. I'm just kind of cracked like that. They don't build them like me anymore. <clears throat> you remember when we were talking about reggae and I looked up the reggae charts for the Billboard Hot 200 and Bob Marley's legend has been the number one selling reggae album every week since like 1978? Dude has a, a stranglehold on the genre still. <laughs> okay, hang on. 2012, 1.8 billion views, a.k.a. My Worst Nightmare. It's not Gangnam Style. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. I kind of like no, no no I'm going to I'm going to yeah 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 there's something in here bro sound effect I think I think that this is a girl talk song now which is obviously not going to be true for a number of reasons just skip me Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pop some tags. I've only got $20 in my pocket. Now it's 12 years later on. I need $29 in my pocket. Okay. The bass definitely got it. You know what? I mean? you, need the, you need the saxophone. If you don't get it on the saxophone, you're not gonna get it until the, the verbal clue. You need the... <laughs> Once you get that, it's over. Kind of went overboard with the samples, huh? Five, four, three, two, one, go! Okay, this is a this is a jam. I wasn't really partying when this song came out, but I imagine if you were like 18. With a red solo cup, this went kind of crazy. Went pretty hard in the 10th grade. <laughs> he released an album two days ago. Well, they don't call him Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld, reincarnated voice. They don't call him Macaless. <laughs> All right, let's do some dolls, shall we? 
1987, 584 million views. So it's every song ever made. One, two, one, two, three, go. Okay, I, I, I need more. That's just, it's, it's a little too basic. I like it. I like it. I like a good bass. Ooh. Oh, it's Welcome to the Jungle. It's Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah. Dude, that is a part two. That's definitely a part two. It's like, it is a part two, yeah. K.K. Slider puts in the work. Greetings to the rainforest. What the fuck? Anything you want, but you better not take it from me. Oh, he's kind of slow simmering on it. He's got that stuff in the pressure cooker. It does sound like a Mario jump in there, doesn't it? <laughs> Guns N' Roses is so funny to me. I, there's people who absolutely hate them. I'm not like that. I think they've got like six or seven slappers. But then there's people who it feels like they're locked in like a... a time capsule and there's like the it's the only band they listen to and i'm like brother they got three total albums and then axel rose disappeared for 32 years and got replaced by a body double like what do you you gotta you gotta expand your horizons a little bit man i'm a complete guns and roses hater they they have a few good songs bro sweet child of mine is a good song welcome to the jungle is a good song paradise city is a good song patience is a good song November Rain, maybe a little over dramatic, but I probably wouldn't hit skip on it. Night Train? I feel like Night Trains, I, I dare not sing Night Train because I'm pretty sure the whole thing takes place in like a, like a frequency that only a dog can hear. You Could Be Mine, I feel like is okay. What's the one that goes, Oh, when I think about you, I want our home. <laughs> Oh, when I think about you, oh, I love you, girl. He says something like that. That's what I like about you. That's, that shit is by the Rembrandts, bro. What the fuck, man? I mean, they're not bad, but they're kind of like the Who or Led Zeppelin is weird when you're still listening to them all the time. You leave fucking Roger Daltrey, John Entwistle, Keith Moon and fucking Pete Townsend out your damn mouth. Guns N' Roses, listen, they made some, some good rock music, but you're going to put it up there with, with the album Who's Next from 1972? What does Guns N' Roses have that, that strikes the same chord within your soul as fucking Baba O'Reilly or something that speaks about the nature of politics like Won't Get Fooled Again? I think about that shit all the time. I was walking through Vancouver. We used to have... Uh, public e-bikes that you could rent from they were sponsored by a cable company called Shaw Shaw got bought by a cable company called Rogers they've repainted all the Shaw bikes red and changed the logo to Rogers meet the new boss brother same as the old boss so true or whatever <laughs> when you when you want the streamer to just move on hello hey <laughs> 2008 You can hear it, right? Yes. Oh, this is just dance. No, no, uh, yes, it's just dance. Come on. Come on, come on. That's like, that's too easy. Bass goes crazy on that. I mean, I mean it's, I'm not mad that it's too easy. It's nice that it was easy. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's a song I've never heard. Ooh. Spin that record, baby. Diddy, diddy, do just dance. Gonna be okay. Sky do Okay, that's a good one. It's a good, I like Lady Gaga. You know, I was going to say as much as anybody, but that's not true. 
<laughs> That's not true at all. Lots of people like her more than I do, but I like her okay. She's in Joker too. Oh, you mean uh, Joker de un petit Beaujolais pour les enfants, s'il vous plaît? Yes, okay. C'est vrai. C'est business. C'est business. Okay. Here we go. 1985, 1.9 billion views. It's the most popular song in history. It's Take On Me by AHA. Yep. Okay, that was a fast one. <laughs> Hear me out here, guys. It's been stuck in my head. Alanis Morissette voice, okay? What it all comes down to Is that everything's gonna be fine, fine, fine Cause I got one hand on my penis And the other one is squeezing my ball sack I'm soft but I'm gooning I'm hard but I cannot come I'm <laughs> I'm home and I'm gooning. I'm a shower, but it's frigid, baby. Cause what it all comes down to is that everything's gonna be fine, fine, fine. Cause I got one hand on my ball sack and the other one's tickling my asshole. There we go, there we go.